In this video, we'll be discussing principles of inheritance, which is standard level content from D3.2 on inheritance. In our discussion on inheritance, we are going to be limiting um, what we learn to sexually reproducing eukaryotes. So we won't be talking about asexual reproducers or prokaryotes. Now, just to review, it is meiosis that produces haploid gametes. So female gametes like the egg are going to be haploid. Male gametes, for example, a sperm are also going to be haploid which means that when they fuse together, they are going to form a zygote that is diploid. And when we say diploid, that means that each zygote will have two copies of every autosome. Those are non-sex chromosomes. And when we say copies, they're not exact copies. Remember, those are homologous pairs. So same genes in the same location, perhaps different alleles. But I just wanna note that zygotes are inheriting two alleles for every trait, one from each parent. Gregor Mendel was one of the founding scientists in this whole field of inheritance and genetics. And so he was working a lot with pea plants and plants make really great genetic uh, experimentation um, organisms because they have relatively short um, generation times and there aren't any ethical considerations there. So he had these insanely large sample sizes and was looking within those samples to find patterns. And it was through the analysis of those patterns that he started to discern patterns in inheritance. So the way to create these controlled studies was that he needed to control the reproduction. So he needed to control which gametes were fusing. So he cut off the anthers of plants to prevent them from self-pollinating, and he transferred pollen from some plants to other plants, okay? Once he did that, he uh, covered them with a paper bag to prevent further cross-pollination from other plants. So basically just a controlled reproductive environment. And he was able to study different traits through different generations. So this original generation is what we call the P or parental generation the offspring resulting from that parental generation are called the F1 generation. And then if you take individuals from that F1 generation and you cross them together, you would get F2 two generations. So again, another great reason to use plants because it doesn't matter that we're mating siblings together. We wouldn't want to do that with humans or anything like that. All of the offspring of sexual reproduction are going to be diploid, okay? So they're going to be 2N, and that means for each chromosome, those chromosomes are going to come in pairs, the homologous pairs, one from the mom, one from the dad. And what we're going to notice is that they had the same genes in the same locations, but not necessarily the same alleles. Alleles are different versions of a gene, like perhaps the allele for being red versus the allele for being white, those alleles will differ slightly in their base sequence. The genotype is the combination of alleles um, that an individual has when you consider both um, homologous chromosomes. So for example, um, little r, big R, that is a genotype, okay? So we're looking at combinations of alleles, and there are a few different ways that we can describe those combinations. This prefix homo means same, so homozygous means two of the same alleles. And something can be homozygous recessive, so I see down here at the bottom that for this gene, this individual is homozygous recessive. In general, we use a small, like non-capital letter, so a lowercase level letter to symbolize a recessive allele. So this person has a recessive allele from the mom and a recessive allele from the dad, so recessive allele from both parents means homozygous recessive for that gene. I also see a case where they are homozygous dominant, okay? So both the same and both dominant. 
There are um, a couple of instances here where this individual has a trait that they are heterozygous for. So heterozygous means two different alleles. Hetero means different. So for example, the big H and the little H, so one dominant allele and one recessive allele. We're going to be using these terms from here on out, so it's important to understand what they mean. Genotype is that combination of alleles. That refers to genetics. The phenotype is the physical or observable traits, okay? And so this is like the physical expression. There are some traits that we have that are completely controlled by genetics, like blood type. It doesn't matter what your environment is, your blood type is determined from the moment those male and female gametes fuse. But for a lot of traits, that phenotype is going to either be influenced partially or all the way by the environment. So it is both the genotype and the environment that can influence phenotype. For example, tattoos are an example of a physical expression that is caused by the environment only. There are quite a few traits like height um, where that physical expression, that observable trait is a combination of genes and the environment. So for example, if I have a genotype that um, produces um, traits for me to be really tall, yet I don't get very good nutrition, then I will probably not be very tall. So there are some examples of a combination of genotype and environment. New alleles are created via mutations, okay? So if alleles are differences in base sequences, those differences arise by mutation. Alleles can be classified in several different ways. We will talk about dominant alleles and recessive alleles. Um, dominant alleles are going to be alleles that are always expressed in the phenotype. There's no hiding those guys. Recessive alleles are only expressed when the dominant allele is absent. So let's say an individual is homozygous dominant. So they have two dominant alleles they are going to show the dominant phenotype. If an individual is homozygous recessive, they are going to show the recessive phenotype. If an individual is heterozygous, they will show the dominant phenotype. So in this case, even though I have conflicting messages, this recessive allele is masked by, or I should say it's masked by this dominant allele. In future videos, we'll be doing a lot of um, practice problems using something called a Punnett grid. And Punnett grids are tools that help us predict um, probability in offspring. They are not guarantees. They are showing possibilities and probabilities. And so if I wanna look at one trait, I draw a Punnett grid like this. If you're looking at two traits, that's a whole different story. But what we need to write across the outside are the genotypes of the parents. Okay, so I want to look specifically at um, how their gametes are arranged in terms of their alleles. So let's say I have one parent that is homozygous dominant, and I have another parent that is heterozygous. I'll work with this parent first. Okay, this means that half of these, this parent's gametes are going to have this dominant allele and the other half of this parent's gametes are going to have this dominant allele. And then if I think about the other parent, half of this parent's gametes are going to have this allele, and half of this parent's gametes are going to have this allele. So notice that when I'm writing the parental genotypes um, along the outside, instead of having two alleles for each trait, they only have one because these are representing the parent gametes on the outside, okay? So on the outside here, I have the parent gametes, like their alleles. All right, so we all the way around the outside here. Then to create the, or to fill in the inside of the Punnett square, what I'm really simulating here is the fertilization process. So if this gamete fuses with this gamete, then the offspring will have a genotype that looks like this. If this gamete fuses with this gamete, then the genotype will be this. If this gamete fuses with this gamete, 
it will have a heterozygous genotype and so will this gamete and this gamete. And so what we're seeing here are just the total, um, or all of the possibilities for what the offspring um, might be. And you can also talk about probability, which we'll do in another video. So all of these things on the inside, these are all offspring genotypes. Okay, so again, it's important to remember that these are not guarantees, it's possibilities and probabilities. But of course, it's not always so simple as here is my genotype, here is the phenotype. Many genes um, exhibit, or I should say many traits, exhibit something called phenotypic plasticity. Plasticity refers to change. So this is when phenotypes can change, and that change is reversible, due to changing patterns in gene expression. It is very important that you understand that the genotype remains the same. So the genotype is constant, nothing happens there, but what organisms can do and cells can do is that they can alter the pattern of genetic expression. They can choose to turn on or activate genes or to silence them. So a great example here is skin darkening due to UV exposure. UV exposure can trigger the production um, of a skin pigment called melanin, which causes the skin to become darker. It doesn't cause a change in the genotype, it just causes a change in the pattern of genetic expression and of course that is reversible also and it's a great example here in theme D of continuity and change the genotype is continuous what can change is the phenotype depending on both environmental triggers and patterns of genetic expression